Welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash and I am your host on this journey through men's style, self-development and personal grooming. And today I'm going to answer some questions that have been sent in by viewers in relation to men's footwear and the more dressy style of things, the dress shoes of course. So let's crack straight on. Let's answer some of these questions. Now the first one comes from William who says, what is your view regarding the installation of heel savers, also known as taps or heel protectors, on men's dress shoes? It seems the inexpensive plastic ones are quite unobtrusive, noiseless, and virtually unseen. They help keep the heels from wearing at angles and looking shabby. They are cheap and easy to replace. I cringe when I see men walking around with worn out and angled he heels on their shoes. What are your thoughts? Couldn't agree more. It shows if your heel is sort of worn down on an angle, obviously your walking gait is uh, sort of non, you know, equal, and you know, you're gonna need to have those heels replaced from time to time. And a lot of people, as you say, they do go down the route of having some form of heel uh, protection on there. Now I've got a pair of shoes here, which I've had that done to. And this is a pair of Sanders Black Cap to Oxfords, as you can see, bring them up to the camera, very nice pair of shoes, I have to admit, good, good shine on them. But on the heel, hopefully you can see, there is a steel tip on the a quarter, of the heel, which is the bit where the heel strikes the ground and that affords a higher level of protection. Now this is an aftermarket heel fitment, so it was placed on the top of the heel to because the heel had worn down, so I had that done. I gotta tell you, I would not recommend people have the steel heel protectors, because that noise, as that hits the ground, the resonating click, 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 sounds like a horse walking down the pavement, it really got on my nerves to the extent that I don't wear these anymore. If you're going to have heel protectors on your shoes, certainly go for the rubber type, and you can have this version, but with a rubber insert instead of steel, I would highly recommend that. And I would highly recommend having it done by a professional cobbler as well. Because if you try and do it yourself, and I know there are sort of these steel tips you can nail on, or rubber ones you can glue on, it's never the equal of the work of a professional. And never forget, you know, if you've got a pair of shoes that have worn down a long way and they're good quality, you can send them back to the factory. Most good quality shoe brands like Sanders and so on, they offer a factory refurbishment option. And for a modest price, they will replace the heel. So it's like having a brand new heel on your shoe. So before you go down the sort of route of nailing things on and gluing things to your own shoes, get them fixed professionally and steer away from the steel bits on the bottom because really the noise will just get on your nerves and it will drive you mad as it did me. Now I don't wear those shoes very often at all. I can't remember the last time I wore them. So that's my thoughts. Steer away from the steel, go for the rubber and get it done properly. Okay, now the next question comes from the Wolfman who says, can you recommend a pair of brown chucker boots for me? I am flexible on price. I'm looking for something of quality that will last a long time. I've looked at Loke, Cheney, and Crockett and Jones, but having not handled any of them, I'm unable to decide which would be best. Or is there another brand I should look at? Well, actually, if you're looking for a good, modestly priced pair of utility chucker boots, and they are a great choice, a chucker boot, because they're very flexible. You can wear them, you know, with casual clothing, with your jeans, with your chinos, with your uh, grey flannel slacks. You can even wear them with a suit if you really need to. So a chucker boot is a very good thing to have in the shoe collection. Uh, I would say you've already named two of the brands I would have gone for. Firstly, Crockett and Jones. Right, really good quality brand. They hold the Royal Warrant, the Royal Household. They manufacture a, a series of boots called Tetbury. Now the Tetbury chucker boot is a very classic but sleek looking contemporary chucker boot, which to my eye is aesthetically quite beautiful. It's got a slightly squared off toe. It's got sleek and embellished lines as a chucker boot should. And two uh, eyelets for the laces, so a classic chucker style. And they also come in brown suede, black calf leather, but the brown calf leather is a very beautiful boot. I think you can't go far, far wrong with that. And it was the boot in black which was chosen 
by James Bond for Daniel Craig's character uh, in Skyfall, I believe. So really well thought of, 510 pounds. It's a little expensive, but you get a boot and it's got a day-night sole as well. So it's good for utility wear, for wearing in the winter and on you know slippery surfaces. Day-night is a great choice for your boot. It's not too thick, so it's obtrusive, but it's not too, uh, you know, sort of, shallow so it's not very much use at all so definitely go for the day night go for the tech brie 510 pounds or slightly different take slightly cheaper at 445 pounds uh, chini one of my favorite brands produce a checker boot called the jackie 3. now this is a little bit more uh traditional it's not quite quite that squared off toe it's more of a uh, sort of conservative checker boot it's got three eyelets for the laces and they do this shoe in seven different colors and, uh, and styles. So you can have different colors, black, suede, and so on. My favorite is one called dark leaf color. It's like a, uh, a rich brown. And you, when you look at it, you know it's gonna patina well. It's a beautiful boot. Again, it's got all the qualities you want. A little bit more traditional than the Tetbury, a little bit cheaper, 50, 60 pounds less. But either of those, you will not go wrong in your checkerboot journey. Okay, next question is from Labib, and he says, quick question for you. I've recently followed your eBay dress shoe guide and managed to buy myself a lovely pair of Joseph Cheney Black Capto Oxfords for just £50. Yet I'm in a predicament. As I go to a private sixth form, I have to wear smart business suit daily. Would you recommend I wear the Chinis or invest in a different shoe that is cheaper? Because I'm wondering whether I should wear a shoe that has a £350 retail price and that will be wasted on sixth form school. Thanks a lot. Okay, well, good question. My advice to you here, well, first of all, well done. You've applied my principles of frugality and you've acquired a really good quality pair of shoes at a very modest price. 50 pounds for a pair of shoes that should cost 350 is a great result in my opinion. And I understand what you're thinking. Do you wanna wear such good shoes on a daily basis or save them for best? The short answer I'm gonna give you is do not save them for best, all right? Life is short. You never know what's around the corner. Wear the best items you can as often as you can because that is where you get the best return for your investment. Even though you've only paid £50 for those shoes, every single time you wear them, you're getting your money back. You're actually getting a return on the investment you've made within them. So wear them and wear the best item that you can always. You deserve it as an intentionally well-dressed man to always feel the best and present yourself in the best possible way. Now, never forget when you've bought a pair of Chini shoes, for instance, or any good quality brand, don't worry if they wear out because you can send them back to the factory for a full factory refurbishment. Now, earlier in the year, I actually sent a pair of my Chini chucker boots back to the factory and they were refurbished. And their current refurbishment program costs £145 if you send your shoes or boots back in and they will do a full job on them. Now, what's a full job? They will take your shoe or boots it will be assessed in the factory as to what's necessary. It'll be placed on its original last, so that the last with the shoe was made on. They're gonna take away the sole, the heel. They're going to replace the welt. They're gonna put a new sole on it, a brand new heel on it. They'll put a new lining in it. They'll put a new pair of laces on it. They'll put it in a brand new box and they will send it back to you. And the shipping on either end, so your shipping into them and their shipping back to you, is included in the 145 pounds. A very modest investment. So rather than wear a cheap pair of shoes, wear the best that you can, and when they need repairing, get them repaired. Remember, a good quality pair of shoes from a brand like Chini, they can be repaired four or five times in the factory using the refurbishment program. That is potentially a lifetime of wear. So don't be afraid to wear your best things as often as you can. That's the only way you get the best return from them. Okay, my next question is from Chris Block, who asks, I have never ever understood why shoes are so important. 
Don't get me wrong, I understand the value of good and polished shoes, but why are they more important than, say, the jacket or the tie or the pocket square or the haircut or the hat that a man is wearing? Why is it that men are trained to look at other men's shoes to tell what sort of person they're dealing with? Is it a work ethic thing, an attention to detail thing, an honesty thing? Somebody please enlighten me. Well, it's a really good question. And I think the answer really lies in the fact that shoes are such a highly visible and easily identifiable part of one's outfit. You know, when you look at, say, maybe three men in a row, they may all be wearing a charcoal grey suit, a white shirt and tie. And not until you really get close enough and scrutinise them are you going to be able to tell this is a particularly good quality shirt over here, or a very lovely tie, or a good quality suit. When it comes to shoes, because of their high visibility, you're going to be able to tell fairly quickly if that's a good quality pair of shoes, and if the person wearing them has put some time and effort into the visual presentation of those shoes. For a start, you know, real cheap and inexpensive shoes, you know, they're going to give you away as somebody who's a cheap shoe guy. However, it is possible, with a bit of time and effort, and I've done this myself, to take an inexpensive pair of shoes, maybe where, uh, you know, made of corrective grain leather or something like that. If you get a really great shine on those shoes, it can turn them from being cheap and nasty looking to quite shiny and beautiful. Yes, you're sort of, you know, misrepresenting them to a degree, but it is possible. This is why we judge people on the shoes that they're wearing. You know, if you've put time and effort in, if you've gone to the trouble to display those highly desirable qualities that people seek, things like patience, like skill, attention to detail, all things which people want in a person that when they meet them, if you can show that in your shoes, say for instance you've brought those shoes up to a mirror shine, you're demonstrating those qualities, that you've got the patience to sit there and bring them up to a shine. You've acquired the knowledge and the skill to do that, and you've actually, you know, you're walking around and it's making a difference in the way that your appearance is shown to people as you meet them. This is why I think the shoe is such an important thing, because when people look you up and down, the last thing they're going to do, they're going to look at your feet and they will look at those shoes and they will draw an assessment from it. Now people say, well isn't that very shallow? You're drawing an assessment from somebody on their appearance. Well, yes, it is shallow, but if we've only got an appearance to draw an assessment from, it's all we've got to work with. And in the first instance, if you can make a great impression by putting a shine on those shoes, opposed to just having dirty or scruffy shoes, or cheap shoes, right, it makes all the difference in what may follow. A friendship, a relationship, a trustworthiness, a bond might be born by the fact that your shoes are in great shape. And don't forget either, it's one of the opening conversations that I've had so many times. People will come up to me and they will say, Crikey, that's a great shine you've got on those shoes. Were you in the army? And so I can't tell you how many times that's been an opening gambit in a conversation I've had with other people. When they see this mirror shine, they will say that, great shine. And then you're off and running. You've made a new friend. So that's why I think it's so important, because it's something which you just don't get with any other items of clothing. Okay, now finally, last question, a bit of a short one, and this comes from William, who says, shouldn't your socks match the colour of your shoes? That's what I was brought up to believe. And now a lot of men find themselves getting dressed up to go out for an occasion, and you never know what colour socks to wear. All right, should you wear a sock which matches the colour of your shoes, or should you wear a sock which matches the colour of your trousers, or the clothing that you're wearing? The traditional idea around it is that shocks should always be a shade or two darker than the trousers that you're wearing, all right, rather than the same colour as your shoes. Because if you applied that principle that you have socks the same colour as your shoes, imagine you're wearing a pair of burgundy or oxblood shoes, all right, it's quite difficult to find socks that colour. You always, my ideology has always been you wear a pair of socks which are close in colour to the trousers that you're wearing, not necessarily in alignment with the colour of the shoes. Just my thoughts on the matter, and I think I did a little bit of research on this, and the general consensus is much the same. So you match the sock 
to the clothing rather than the shoe, because in some cases it's going to be impossible. Now, obviously, if you're wearing a black uh, pair of cap to Oxford, say a very um, you know, business-like situation, and you've got a charcoal gray suit, yes, go with a black sock, you can't go far wrong. Generally speaking, darker colored socks are gonna be more acceptable, unless you've got a very light colored uh, sock, for instance, uh, sorry, a light colored shoe, maybe a walnut uh, colored brogue, um, you know, you may want to sort of go for a lighter sock, a grey or something like that. But generally speaking, darker socks which align in colour to the clothing rather than the shoe and you won't go far wrong. Okay, chaps, there we go. That was my sort of run through of the questions that I've received from gentlemen in relation to some footwear conundrums that they have faced. I hope you found it useful. I hope there's been information there that will help you on your shoe journey. If you have a question for me related to footwear or anything of a sartorial nature, feel free to drop me an email. You'll see my email address on the screen now. You'll also find that email address in the about section on the main YouTube page, or even drop me a question in the comment section and I'll try and get back to you either in person or in a future video like this. If you've enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Click the subscribe button if you want to see more like this. If you'd like to contribute to the conversation and take issue with anything I've said, drop it into the comments. Uh, and if you'd like to support the channel, you can either buy us a coffee or become a patron. Go along to my Patreon page, sign up to that, and you'll get extra videos as well as your name appearing on the sheet at the end of this video. So until the next time, wear your shoes with pride and passion and the best shine you can put on them, and you will not be far of the mark. Till the next time, take care, and I will see you again very soon.